Hi y'all, it's me. Guess what? My challenges are back over at my scrap room. Yay! I hope you guys are excited. I've been on hiatus since um, November. I thought I'd be back a lot sooner with my challenges, but life just got really busy for me and crazy. I moved out of state and all that good stuff and now I'm getting ready to move again. I just moved in here in the end of July, uh, January and here I am getting ready to move again. So um, packing up a craft room this many times, not easy and I just have a lot on my plate. So um, please forgive me for that. But anyhow, I'm going to try to resume again. Um, and for those who don't know, my scrap room is a Ning site. Um, it is a forum, a gallery, a chat room. We do swaps on the 21st day of each month. Um, we used to do secret swaps, and I may still, I don't know yet. Um, we do Gina's challenges, and there's other good things there, and the people there are so friendly. We also have now a Facebook page um, for those who didn't know, so please come on over and like our page as well, and then you'll see updates about what's going on at my scrap room on your Facebook um, feed, so that's a good thing. Um, so what it is is every week I post a challenge on Sunday, and the challenge needs to be completed by the following Sunday at 8 p.m. And now it's going to be Mountain Time and not Pacific Time since I've moved. Um, so it will be 8 p.m. Mountain Time. They need to have pictures posted in the gallery um, on the thread, excuse me, of the challenge so that I can see them. If they're not on the challenge thread, I won't know where to look for them. So please be sure to post them in the challenge thread. Um, you need to be an active member of my scrap room for 30 days before you're eligible to win a prize and that means that you need to be posting in the gallery, chatting in the chat room, participating in swaps and all of that. We just don't want people to pop in just to win a prize for a challenge so that's why I have a 30 day um, pre-membership thing that needs to be done first but you can still do the challenge if you want to, that's up to you. So. Um, Anyhow, and you don't have to send the challenge to me. It's not a thing like that. You just take a picture of it so I can see that you did it. And make sure you read all the rules and the directions there. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure someone at my scrap room will help you. So let me show you what the prize is for this, um, this week. So I'm going to start it off at the bottom of the pole. <laughs> and I'm going to give you eight sheets of lightweight chipboard. I use this a lot for making my albums and stuff. I'm going to give you two corrugated cards from Recollections with the envelopes that go with them. I will be giving you one burlap bag. I will be giving you these rub-ons right here. No, let me bring them up just a little. I'm filming at a different angle. You guys have no idea how hard this is. <laughs> my way I'm sitting right now and the way my table is. Um, you'll be getting these Prima flowers. And these are older Primas, so they're vintage, if you will. <laughs> so I'm going to include those. You're going to be receiving this Die Cuts with a View Tattered Time page, which is pretty vintage -y and it matches the typewriter. And just, it's very fun if you're into this style. So you'll be receiving that. And then you're also going to be receiving two embossing folders, which are the clocks and the alphabet here. So you'll be receiving that. And the package is flattened for mailing purposes. So you'll be receiving that. And lastly, I've got a bunch of embellishments. And let me pull out the easy ones. These are D-rings, so you'll be getting some of those. Um, you'll be getting a memo pin. I know there's something else in here that's different. And then two of these word tags from Tim Holtz. One reads Cherish and one Simplify. And then these are, um, oh, there's another memo pin. Okay, so you get another one. And these here happen to be typewriter, um, they're typewriter metal doohickeys. One says backspace, the rest have numbers on them and stuff. So they're all numbers and symbols kind of things. And they're pretty cool and they're pretty heavy actually. Um, so that's what you'll be receiving this week. Um, now what do you have to do? Oh, I lied. There's one more. One more thing. Hold on. I thought that was the end, but it's not. I put one more thing in there. You will be receiving one bottle of Lindy Starburst in dark chocolate truffle. And this has the applicator top on it. 
you can switch that out if you have a spray top you want to use instead but that's what it's coming with so you will be receiving that as your prize if you're selected and please remember that the winner has to pay the shipping on the prize that kind of helps me out a little bit uh, with cost so what are we making this week well <laughs> I thought I was going to get mine finished and I didn't I'm going to give you an idea we're going to be making a diorama on a pedestal now a diorama is just basically like a shadow box and the pedestal is what it stands on so that's kind of what we're going to be doing I started mine I just haven't finished it so I'll try to finish it by the next time I do the drawing just to show you how mine came out but basically this is a box that I created myself and it has the lid in the bottom piece and then what um, pedestal can be anything from a um, I have a candlestick there you could stand it on you could stand it on a pot from you know a peat pot I think they're called you could st stand it on that you could stand it on a piece of PVC whatever you do it needs to be on a pedestal of sorts or even little wood thingy like this you can put that at the bottom if it can stand on that maybe this way so whatever you can do to make it stand that's what it needs to have at the bottom there are other requirements as well and um, basically what you're going to be doing is taking an image that you've either stamped and colored or printed out or you can even use something dimensional now this one I printed out on my computer and this is a dement like on the instructions I say 3d item that would be something like this if you wanted to use an actual something something instead of a printed image and basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be including this in the box like so and you're going to be creating a scene inside the box you can add whatever you want I've got a few requirements that you need to have on here and you'll see those over at my scrap room so basically you're just going to embellish this box and then stick it on the pedestal and that's how you're going to take your picture and make sure that I can see the inside you can use any box you want um, but it must measure at least five by three inches that's what size this one is I'm going to show you how to make one if you don't have one and I made this out of a pretty um, heavy weight cardstock I didn't I tried it with chipboard but it was just too heavy so what you need to do is you need two sheets of cardstock and you would want um, easier if you do um, double-sided because then you don't have to worry about the inside of the, the box there you know it just takes care of it for you but if you want to do you could um, actually adhere two pieces of pattern paper together back to back and use that um, you would then need probably four sheets so just keep in mind that when you're when you're doing it so basically for the bottom of the box you're going to cut your paper at nine by seven and a quarter and you're going to score it at two inches on all four sides so you're going to basically score rotate two inches oops and it jumped be careful to go slow so it won't jump <laughs> two inches and two inches and what I want to do next um, the score lines that are here on the nine inch side there you can see where they are here not sure how well you can see that I'm not looking at my computer to watch what I'm recording so um, anyhow I just like to cut on either side of that score line just a very thin strip it's probably like an eighth of an inch if even that just up to that first score line and you want to snip that piece out it's right here it's just a little sliver see that it's just a little tiny sliver that came out of there you want to repeat that on all um, the four piece uh, four areas so let me do that really quick because I'm, I'm not going to do this on the other one but I will do it on this one just to show you and I'm not being precise I'm being kind of sloppy actually but you can take your time with it it's not you know you have plenty of time. You've got a week to do your project. Um, let's see. Here we go. Okay. So once you get all of those done, basically all you're going to do is fold on the scored lines. Put them all fold. Of course, like I said, take your time. Don't rush. I'm rushing for the sake of a video, but you don't have to. And then you're simply going to glue these tabs inside the box in all four places and that will become 
your base, just like that. And when you're gluing, some people, I know you like to hold it up like this to glue, but it's actually better if you set it down and put the glue on and then hold it like this. It makes the box square. It keeps it square because when you're holding it up in the air, it gets kind of wonky. So it's better if you do it sitting down on a flat surface. So anyhow, that's your bottom. And that's what I have right here. That's the bottom. And it's glued kind of haphazardly. I just wanted to show you. The next piece we're going to do is going to be cut at eight and a half by seven and we're going to score at one and three quarters on all four sides. Let's see what am I doing? One and three quarters. One and three quarters. And one and three quarters. And again, you're going to cut those little notches out, whatever. Um, the thing I want to tell you about the top, before you begin to assemble it together like we did with this one, you want to be sure to cut out your window. It's easier if you do it before while it's still flat than if you wait until afterward. So basically what I did for my window, and here's my box again, and I'll take this off so you can see. For my window, I basically took one of my sizzlet dies, I centered it on there, I traced it, and then I cut it out with scissors. I couldn't fit it through my big shot, so that's why I had to um, do it this way. So I just traced it, and then I cut it out with scissors. And then I did the cuts on the four areas, and then I assembled it. So then it came out with the top. And if you don't cut it, it's, you know, like I said, if you try to cut a window in this now, it's going to be a little difficult. It's much easier when it's flat. So then the bottom just goes into the top, and there you have your little decorated box. So um, that's basically how you do it. If you want to see all the rest of the requirements, um, because there are some embellishments you need to add, etc., just come on over to my scrap room and click on the tab up top that reads Gina's Challenges and look for challenge number 70 and you will find all the information there. So good luck to everyone and don't forget that you need to get those entries in by 8 p.m. Mountain Time not Pacific anymore, and you'll have your chance to win all these great prizes. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great one, and if you have any questions, just drop me a note. Thanks. Bye for now.